beautiful riding. It's ideal riding for an adventure bike. And I'm starting to see why Spain is so popular. I know it may be different corners of it for different people, but even this, we're only 45 minutes outside what I think is Spain's third largest city. And we're in peaceful tranquility, cooler up here than it is down in the city. And um, it's just been a great ride. It's an easy track. Um, it's really meant for four by fours, I would say, but it's not like we find the UK all rutted and torn up. There are some bits that are washed a little bit from where rain has run down them, but honestly, any adventure bike with 50-50 tires could have come up here. And I really enjoyed the Aralian Field Himalayan. I got to ride one a few weeks ago at the ABR in the UK. Just a road ride, but it just felt nice. It felt good. And while on paper, they just don't add up at all. They make no sense. When you go out and ride one, it's different. You know, when you look at the stacks on paper, they're overweight, underpowered. Um, yeah, haven't got the suspension travel, haven't got the ground clearance, haven't got the sophisticated electronics. You know, they really are really basic until you get on one and ride it. And they've got those basics right. When you stand up on it, it feels good. I mean, I'm 5'11", about 165 pounds. So, you know, I'm a fairly average kind of guy. And I stand up on it, it fits absolutely perfectly. You roll off the tarmac, you just stand up on the pegs and keep going. And it feels perfectly good. Um, I'm re really enjoying it. And that is, you know, compared to, I've got an Africa Twin, which is a better bike in almost every way, except perhaps not maybe more fun. And certainly makes you think a little bit as you head down trails you don't know. How are they going to work out? You know, is this bike going to prove too heavy at the bottom of some hill? Um, now, while the Himalayan has weight, it doesn't feel like it has. It carries it really well. And, you know, when you're riding it, it feels more like a 250, but with the torque of a 400. And not the aggression of some of a DRZ 400, which would be really easy to ride up here and easy to ride up here faster. And would certainly have the suspension travel, but it also a lot more power. And that's not always your friend on these kind of unknown gravel roads. You know, the Himalayan seems to be just a perfect balance for this. It chugs along very nicely in second or third gear, making no fuss, not trying to spin the back, but also very stable. And in some ways its weight probably helps it a little bit on these kind of trails. Um, you'd be your enemy in what I was doing a week ago. But here I think it just, it plows along nice and stable, nice and steady. And yeah, I'm just enjoying it. And that's the thing that matters. And it's enough that makes me think, would I like to have one? And certainly the rental bike. They're a great value to rent because they're a low price bike in the first place. But also they're a very easy bike to hop on. They're not much more difficult than a scooter around town. So if you are like I am staying in the city, you know, you don't have a big bike to handle around the cobbled streets. And yet when you get on the motorway, I've hit 130 kilometers an hour on it. It runs perfectly well on the motorways. Yeah, it probably feels a bit more comfortable at 100, 110 kilometers an hour. But yeah, it does it. And it's not crazy in vibrations while doing it. And when you get on the, what in the UK we call A and B roads, so side roads, uh, 50 mile an hour, give or take kind of roads, then it's lovely. It's absolutely perfect. In and out of roundabouts is a torquey engine, so you can watch where you're going more than worry about the gears. And speaking of the gears, I found the gearbox perfect. I haven't had a single problem with the gearbox. Standing up or sitting down, it changes exactly as I expect. Um, the clutch is nothing special, but it doesn't need to be because again, given the torque of the engine, you're not riding the clutch as much as you'd be with either a Revy bike or with a bike with, with too much power to the rear wheel where you're trying to you know, stay on that clutch just to stop it you know, spinning when it hits the loose stuff. So it's kind of got um, its own, like some other bikes, its own built-in torque control, i.e. it's not really got the power to spin the back out from under you. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm impressed by it, I like it. And um, yeah, 
I don't know what it's like in long-term reliability. I don't own one, but I'm not hearing bad things from owners. You know, the more you hear people talk about it, the more it seems to be impressing. I suppose it's a little bit of mm, lots of us like it, but we don't want to admit it. We want to argue about the Africa Twin versus the Multistrada versus the GS. Thank you for listening to this a little bit. And um, I think I will now that I've cooled down, I will get my gear back on and decide which way down the hill I'm going. Thank you. <laughs>